All right, this video is for you if you are a first time user to Microsoft Excel. So let's get started here. My name is Steve Chase. Glad you're with me here. So I'm staring at a blank workbook. Each workbook contains millions of cells. So they're all over the place here. Um, I've got a scroll bar that can go down, you know, just down to 100 or so, but this thing will go down to over a million rows. And if I go all the way to the right here, I can go over 16,000 columns. So it is a lot, okay? Not to be daunted, but there's the bottom of the spreadsheet there. It's really two to the 20th power. Um, so if I were to just uh, start doing this here, two times two, there we go. That, my friends, is how many rows there were. There was a number in between here, 16,000. That is uh, how many columns there are, 16,000 something. It's crazy, okay? So I can always go up to A1. This is my name box. Your name box is in the top left-hand corner. That is going to tell you, hey, which cell are you in, okay? Over to the right is our formula bar. And a formula bar is going to show you, as it suggests, the formula, if you have a calculation, or lots of people use it just as a list, and it will just show you the text, alphanumeric text that or symbols that are entered into a particular cell. Okay, down below we have worksheets, so I can click this button here, and I can have more than one worksheet if I wanted to. If this was uh, something I wanted to, I could rename maybe and you know type January and this one might be February. I can right click, rename it. So there are lots of ways to have data inside your Microsoft Excel environment. Okay, up above we see what's called the ribbon. Our ribbon has different buttons here that you can click on. Lots of cool things like inserting rows and cells, deleting things, auto sum, quite a bit of stuff here. A lot of everything that's happening here is on the home tab, so they're popular commands. But, you know, maybe I'm trying to set up um, some printing. I could go to the page layout tab and I can work with my printing here as far as setting up my page for printing and scaling the fit and all that good stuff here. Okay. All right, if you're following along with me, open up a blank sheet of paper, blank workbook, and let's start off with entering uh, the three major data types that are out there. So I'm just gonna type um, ID, name, and amount, okay? So there are three types of data. Um, with names, you know, I might have Sam, Alex, Bill. Those are all text enters. Now I'm going to enter um, some numbers here. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to put in some rates here. So let's say 15.25, 18.25, and $20. Okay. So in the world of data, we have three major types of data. We've got numbers, we've got text, and the last one that we have is dates. So let's imagine I've got um, a date of hire, and I want to put in some information here. Let's just make some, some numbers real quick here. And we'll say Bill, yeah, it was awesome. <clears throat> Okay, now I've got some dates in there. And can I call your attention to, notice how numbers are going to the right and text is going to the left, okay? So all of, see how th things are? And really can't see the date of hire, but if I were to stretch out, and here's how you stretch out column. You can make column wider or smaller like that. Now, if a column is too small to see the date or the number, it shows you those pound signs there. All right, yeah, we're getting there. 
I'm trying. There we go. Okay, but notice it will not happen with the letters. So I, I, I just, just, just how it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, so text is going to show up, but anytime you see the the pound sign, all that means is up here. That column is too small to display, so you got to stretch it out now. I can double click right there, and it will auto fit. Or I can select all the columns, and then I can resize them all at once, and they're going to be the equal weight like that. Same thing with the rows. I can select all the rows. I can pull it out wider like that. Okay. So um, now I have some data, right? Interesting that I can start formatting. So I'm going to start formatting. I'm going to select these numbers here, and I'm going to go to the Home tab, and I'd like that to be currency format. So I get my currency or accounting. The difference is here's accounting, here's currency. It's just going to be where the dollar sign falls. My date of hire. Lots of things I can do with dates. So when I go to dates, I can do long date, or I can do short date. Okay. Um, now, for the names here, it, because it's text, um, general is generally the just specific format. That's the default. So any blank cell you have, it's general, and it will adapt and change to the actual formatting that it thinks you want to have. If you need to change it, you come up here and change it. Okay. When it comes to these dates here, I have the ability to, I'm um, sorry, when it comes time to the, the data here, I have the ability to uh, sort and filter. That's what I'm going to do next with you. I'm going to create a table. So I'm going to highlight all of this right here. Okay. And there's an option for format as table. So pick a format that you like. My table has headers. Yep. Everything looks good here. I hit OK. And there we go. So what's neat about this is that now I can put them amounts largest to smallest. Or I can put the date of hire newest to oldest. Or oldest to newest. I can sort the IDs. Smallest, largest, largest to smallest. Really handy stuff there. Okay. And if I entered something new, so I'm going to sort it back to the original order. I come in here, I type four. Let's say I come in here, we've got Steve and put in today's date. It's pretty cool. And I got Aaron. Okay, 525. Well, I'm gonna mess up the date here. Let let's say that I screw up the date. So I'm trying to type 525 and I do 5255. And I just Totally messed that up like that. Well, what will happen is it will flank to the left here by default if you haven't pre-formatted it, and it will kind of alert you that that's not the right format, right? And so I've got this goofy thing here. So I would just need to change this. It's meant to be 525. I'm still off because I got too many twos in there. Now I'm um, back at it here. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is a little lesson on entering some data, making it a table. And the key lesson I want you guys to see here is know your data types, numbers, dates, text, because those are the big three when it comes to being able to sort and filter. Okay. Next, I'm going to go to a new worksheet. Just click over here. And I'm going to just do a little zooming so it's easy to see. I'm going to click this zoom button here. And I'm going to share with you how to do a quick and easy formula. So let's say that I've got a red and a blue. And red is 58 and blue is 64. How much? is it if we add up the red and the blue? All right, we can create a total. 
And the easiest way to calculate those would be to start off with the formula bar, which is right here, and type an equal sign. That equal sign is going to now allow us to proceed with the formula. And in this case, we want to go with D3. D3 represents this 58 right here, plus D4. So you enter in D3 plus D4. When we're done, we hit Enter, and we get the formula. So watch what's going to happen here. I'm going to click on this 58 here. It's D3. I see 58. I click on the 64. I look up here, and I see 64 is equal to that. Now, things get interesting when I click here. We're going to see that equals D3 plus D4. That cell here, D5, equals that. So, I mean, if you read it from left to right, it really says that D5 equals D3 plus D4. So that's what's going on here is that we've got D5 equals D3 plus D4. It's pretty awesome, right? But that, that is exactly what's going on here, and we are good to go, okay? Now, another cool thing about this formula is let's say blue changes the number of units or whatever, and it's now 71. So I'm going to type 71, hit Enter. And we've updated that formula here. Really, really cool stuff here. Okay. Um, what if things get moved around? No problem. Like, what if I? What if um, suddenly we deleted column B? So you can delete the entire column. Nothing's in there. Just right click column B, delete. Things are going to shift over. And I can also do the same thing with row two. I can right click and do a delete. Notice now that Excel has modified uh, the formula here. And now C4 equals, right? C4 equals, C4 equals C2 plus C3. All right, it's not rocket science here. I'm going to start to get some decimals now. Let's say it's 58 point that and instead of 71 it's 71 point that okay when it comes time to formatting decimals you can select all of these and there's a little decrease decimal and increase decimal and we'll round up round down so that is really interesting there is that right now we see 59 but the true number is actually 58.587. That's the true number. So don't be deceived. I know the first look that you see something, you think something's true. That's not the case. So be extra careful. If you print this to paper, it's going to say 59. But if you, be, be mindful that it's been rounded up here. So you might want to, in this case, show at least one decimal it all depends on you know who the reports for and all that good stuff here all right all right um last thing i want to share with everybody here is how to use the auto sum button so if there was a case where you had let's imagine that you had uh like a series like January. I'm going to just click this autofill button and pull it down to June. So let's imagine that we had um, some numbers here of how many new customers we got each month. Okay. Well, instead of having it go like this, This is pretty archaic here and, and kind of hard to do. There's going to be a better way. Okay. And so here's the better way. The better way 
is to create a function, which looks like this, equals sum, which means adds the cells in a given range. Okay, we need to open parentheses and we need to contain it. So that function right there, equals sum, is the, is the format, mat, proper format to calculate the sum of all the numbers that are properly formatted within the range from B1 through B6. 124, okay? I'm gonna delete that and show you that I could also go up to the auto sum button, put my cursor, my cell where I want it, click auto sum, it will populate and look for data like that. That's pretty cool there. Now, if uh, for whatever reason we were missing February and we came here and we clicked auto sum, notice how right off the bat it just shoots here. So I would have to stretch it out with my mouse to make that work better like that. And so, and then whenever the number comes in, it will populate uh, just fine there. All right, so that's my take on a first time user, just kind of what you want to look at when you're setting up these Excel formats. It's a powerful tool and you're only limited to your imagination as far as what you can put into this Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Don't forget to save your work when you're done so you can go back to it and make changes to it later and update it and let people report off of it. Thanks for watching.